The question that I have today, or the topic that, that we have today is entitled, Where Are You Needed? Where are you needed? And I want us to go to John chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. And it's going to be a, a statement that was put into the Bible that looks very insignificant, but yet carries so much weight. And Jesus was busy moving around, around Galilee, Judea area. And he was moving from Judea to Galilee, which is just like a province. He's coming down. <coughs> And it says this, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. And it says, but he needed to go through Samaria. He needed to go through Samaria. Now that was a very uh, different verse put in the middle of the story. And it was basically, if you had to say, listen, I have to go from Johannesburg to Cape Town, but I had to go to Durban first. And so out of the way, Jesus goes to Samaria. Now, what happens at Samaria? We know that he meets the woman at the well. Okay. Now, what's significant on a few levels. Number one, the, uh, the Jewish people hated the Samaritans. Tomorrow, I'll we'll give you a little bit more background and as to what happened there and why. But they absolutely hated the Samaritans. And Jesus had to go to Samaria and he meets a Samaritan woman and preaches the gospel to her. So I want you to see something that even in Jesus' life, Jesus was under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but also went on assignment. Jesus also used to go on assignment. That when he had an unction, I had to go do this, he would go and do this. When he had an unction to go somewhere, he would go and do that. When he had an unction to... Um, take time somewhere, he would do that. But this is one portion of scripture that makes it very clear that Jesus Christ actually went out on spiritual assignment too. And so we need to know that God wants us on a spiritual assignment. We need to know that God is going to use us. He's going to take us to places. He's going to uh, uh, use us with different people. Because God has a plan for the individual. God had a plan for that Samaritan woman and Jesus Christ had to go fulfill it. Jesus never sent a disciple. Jesus personally went out of his way to go to Samaria to go minister to that lady. Now, in our lives, we have got to believe that God directs our paths. And sometimes you'll end up in a situation where you're not going to even be happy to be there. You go, listen, my circumstances have brought me to you and I'm not even happy or I'm not even comfortable. And you need to realize that many times when that happens, God is actually leading you and directing you. God is bringing you to places or into a circumstance so that you can change it or bring life into that circumstance without you realizing it. And so the next time when you go somewhere or you're busy with something and your plans are not always working out, you need to take the approach, God, where am I needed? Why is this suddenly happening to me? Not everything that happens to you is the devil. Listen carefully. Not everything that happens to you is the devil coming to attack you. And it's a demonic thing that you have to break off your life. And so we need to understand that God wants to use the body of Christ. He wants to lead us. He wants to direct us. And he wants to get us to the place that he has for us for a purpose and for a function. God has a plan for you to get somewhere and do something at certain times in your life. And so we as believers need to start flowing with that and saying and be open to it and say, God, I am on assignment. Do you need me somewhere? Do you need me in a place where I can be an encouragement, be a help, uh, be somebody who needs to actually turn around a demonic thing? Because the Bible says that God directs the path of the righteous. So you might think, oh, well, I'm just going there where I have a desire to be at this place at this time or whatever. No, you are actually being led by the Spirit of God. God is directing you to do that. And so there's so many times and so many experiences that I can tell you in our own lives where you just have a feeling and you just go there and you go, you, you look back and you go, I understand why I was there. You know, you can't believe I was actually at the right place at the right time. 
It wasn't planned. It wasn't something that we conjured up. And sometimes it, we think of people that we don't, we haven't thought of for months. And suddenly we get an unction or a feeling or a remembrance. Listen, get hold of this person today. And you'd phone them and it would be the precise time. You see, I was in a situation just yesterday. We were dealing with something around the college. And Janine says, well, why don't you contact this particular person? That particular person I hadn't spoken to literally in months. I contacted them. I was in the right place at the right time. So I want you to know that God is busy using us on a daily basis if we allow him to. And take this scripture to heart. God directs the path of the righteous wherever you go. All you have to do is say, God, I daily submit myself. You take me to where I'm needed. So the question today is, where are you needed today? Where are you needed where you can make a difference and change somebody's life in the name of Jesus? Okay, so this morning, as we take communion, I want you please to sit down and say, God, I'm available. I'm available to be used. I'm available to do what you are telling me to do. I'm asking you right now to lead me, direct me. Show me where I need to go in the name of Jesus. So let's just pray together. Lord, I just come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that on the night that you were betrayed, you broke the bread and said, take, take it in remembrance of me. You took the cup and you said, drink, this is my blood. Do it in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you that your body was broken for our physical and emotional healing and the, uh, and the blood was shed. Your blood was shed for our salvation and for our protection and for our provision in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you right now. We thank you right now that you can forgive us of anything that we have done. Any trespass, any sin, any wrong intention, any wrong motive, any wrong word. We ask you please to forgive us and to wash us white as snow. Lord, I ask you right now that as we take communion, that we will be sensitive to your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the price that was paid. We ask you right now that as we take communion, you will lead us and direct us by your spirit. Lord, that we will be in the right place in the right time for the function and the purpose that you have. And Lord, I pray that we'll be sensitive where you lead us and what you want us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Let's pray over our physical bodies this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now that we can come before you and we can lay hands on ourselves and we can pray for our physical bodies. We command healing. We release the generous power of God. We thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we were healed. We speak life into our bodies and we thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God. And Lord, we will not have any symptom in our bodies anymore. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I'm very, very excited about the nation fighting this weekend. All right, we are going into battle mode. Okay, we are to call the nation together. And there are a few steps that you need to take. Number one, please. All right, we are uh, praying South Africa. Spread the word. The praying South Africa, a praying South Africa is calling for the mobilization of the saints so that we could pray for marriages in Jesus' name. Now, there's four steps that I need you to take. Number one is, I need you please to go register where you want to pray. Look on Facebook. We've done it on a, a, just as a post. You click that link and then it takes you to a, a prayer time. You just book yourself a slot. All right, you book yourself a slot, put your name in there or put your church in there, put your flow in there, it doesn't matter. Just put the thing in there so that we know where the slots are and that's been taken. Okay, the second step that we need you to do is when you go to your hour prayer that you need to click the step number two, which is a Zoom link that's going to take you so that you can pray with some people over that hour with you. So if you want to pray by yourself, it's fine. But if you want to pray with some folk, 
You can pray in that hour. There's going to be a 24-hour Zoom session running. So you just join it and you pray together with the folk that are in there. Then step three is tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock, the entire nation, everybody comes together. And that is where I bring the spiritual fathers and everybody together like we did last time, just for one hour only. And this is a prayer thing. We are going to pray. Okay. We are not going to be preaching. We are not going to be teaching. It is a prayer time for one hour. And so we are going to pray over marriages, specifically only marriages. Okay, so I want us to get ready for this, spread the word, and let's get this thing done in the name of Jesus, because the church has got to turn this thing around. Satan is getting hold of the, of the marriages and the families, and we need to turn it around in the name of Jesus. All right, let's pray over our economy in Jesus' name. Lord, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, that we as believers can stand in the gap for our economy. Lord, we pray for every business, every business sector. Lord, we release the power of God. We thank you for supernatural contracts, divine connections, supernatural deals, Father, and sales. Lord, we pray right now that you will move by your spirit in a mighty way. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name that every single business will prosper and the blessing of the Lord will be manifest in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your protection over every single person who is out there busy working. We pray for their protection. We pray for their family's protection. Lord, I thank you that you are going to bring us to a place of destiny and purpose, that the economy in South Africa will be blessed and that we will see this reversed and that we will be a blessing for this continent in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will release the power of God over every single person as we build altars, as we call on the name of the Lord for our businesses and for the business sector. Lord, I pray for those that are still in lockdown, those are part of aviation, those that are part of hospitality, Lord, um, and so many others. Uh, Lord, we pray right now, that you will just bring a supernatural means and finance and provision to these families and Lord to this sector. And Lord, I pray right now for every single one of us as we stand in the gap. Lord, we will see the power of God change the circumstance. We come against the virus. We command it to die, to dissipate. We command the numbers to come crashing down in Jesus name. Lord, we pray for those that have, con have uh, con been contaminated. And Lord, are positive, we command for a supernatural healing. We speak life and death will not come near you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our leaders today. We thank you, Lord, that we can lift them up. And we thank you that you are leading them and directing them by your spirit. And Lord, that you will give them the wisdom, the godly wisdom as how to lead our nation. And we thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.